Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Daniel Lau. Um, I'll be the MC for this uh, public lecture. Uh, today we are uh, very honored to have uh, Professor Silver here to give a public lecture. Before that, I will ask our um, department uh, chair, uh, Professor Helen Chen, to give an introduction to our speaker today. Thank you. Okay, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this uh, public lecture. I'm Helen Chen from the Department of Applied Physics. Professor Silva uh, received his education in uh, five, uh, secondary education in Sri Lanka. He then obtained his PA, uh, BA degree from Cambridge and also PhD degree from uh, Cambridge University in 1993. He then took up um, lecturer and then reader and then professor position in the University of Surrey in the UK. He's uh, I think one of the youngest professor in the uh, UK and he's now the head and of the Nano uh, Electronic Center, and also director of the Advanced Technology Institute. Uh, he has received many uh, awards, uh, to name some of them. Uh, he was awarded the Outstanding Young Researcher Award in uh, 1999 by the IUMRS, and received the uh, Women Charles Boys Medal and Prize uh, from the Institute of Physics, and then from the IEE, the Achievement Award and Medal in 2003. The Einstein, uh, Albert Einstein Silver Medal and the uh, Job Hassan uh, Young Scientist Award by the UNESCO in 2003. Uh, the British uh, Aerospace System Chair, Chairman's Bronze Medal for Innovation and uh, Implementation in 2005. He has set up the uh, Advanced Technology Institute at the University of Surrey in 2002, uh, which uh, is with a startup fund with more than 10 million pounds. And uh, he received one of the eight portfolio Perfol uh, partnership awards in integrated electronics for all engineering and physical science, says in the UK um, to the value of six, uh, about uh, seven million pounds. He, well, besides you know, his academic career, he also found two companies. The formed, he formed the Quantum uh, Filament Technology Limited, um, and uh, in, two, in 2006 formed the uh, Surrey Nanosystem Limited. He's an uh, he's elected fellow of the Royal Society of Arts in the UK in 2007, and elected as a fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering UK in 2008. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Professor Silva uh, to give us the talk on nanotechnology for green energy. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chan, for that uh, uh, lovely welcome. And I'd also like to thank my host, uh, uh, Professor Daniel Lau, um, for, for his hospitality and, and all the care he's taken in, in looking after me while I've been here. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and talk to you about a subject that I'm absolutely passionate about, energy and nanotechnology, which are both very, very important to me. The last time I spoke and gave a public lecture was with, uh, in Florida State University, where Harry Croto hosted me at the Dirac Theater. And in that case, the only person who didn't come was Paul Dirac, who sat outside in a bronze statue. So I'm very grateful to see so many people here in the holiday period. Uh, come and, and uh, come for this talk. Um, I must start uh, really by, by thanking the Royal Society and say a little bit more about the Royal Society as we go along. And as indicated, I'm Ravi Silva, and um, I am here as the Royal Society Canton Po Visiting Professor uh, with the Applied Physics Department. And um, my day job is as the Director of the Advanced Technology Institute at the University of Surrey. Now, the topic that was chosen by Daniel and me some time ago couldn't be more topical. This is today's headline, today's editorial in science, right? So this wasn't planned, it just happened. Today's editorial in science says future energy institutes. It's effectively talking about a bill, an energy bill that is going through the US Congress currently that is looking for a five billion 
one-off investment and a 30 billion endowment fund. And what does it want to do? Alternate energies, including solar and wind power. So the topic really is absolutely important. It's important to you, it's important to me, it's important to everyone, it's important to our future. And therefore, I hope what I'll try to do is to give you an overview as to why it is so important and why we all should take part in looking at uh, potential solutions to the energy problem we have. Before we start, I need to give an introduction as to where I come from and, and the Kang Tompo Fellowship. Um, I'm, I'm from the University of Surrey, which is about 30 miles southwest of London in Guildford. And it's between uh, Gatwick Airport and Heathrow Airport. Sorry, Heathrow's there and Gatwick's there. And as a university, our ethos is about doing applied work that can contribute to society. The department I come from, Electronic Engineering, um, together with all the other f uh, faculties in the UK were reviewed in the RAE 2008 exercise, that's the research assessment exercise. We at Surrey had the largest number of four-star world-leading researchers in any electronic engineering department in the UK. So it's twice as much as many of the other London universities and other universities that are pretty well known. So in electronic engineering, Surrey is one of the top places to work in. We also work on applied activities, and this is a typical example. We have 27 satellites that are controlled by our department. We formed a company called Surrey Satellite Technology Limited, and that was sold earlier this year uh, for 100 million effectively to uh, Eads Astrium. And this activity effectively started because of the passion of one person, Sir Martin Sweeting. He was an undergraduate at Surrey, he was a postgraduate at Surrey, he was a lecturer at Surrey, he's a professor at Surrey, and now he's a knight of the realm at Surrey. His passion was to make satellites, and he made that a reality, and he created a company. So again, anything is possible if you really have the will and want to do things, and that is a message that all of us need to take home. The Royal Society, which is sponsoring my visit here, is one of the oldest, or the oldest, uh, premier National Academy of Sciences. It was founded in 1660. And it's got past members, I think many of you would recognize, Isaac Newton, who's here, Christopher Wren, uh, Charles Darwin, Ernest Rutherford. Its current membership includes Stephen Hawking, Harry Croto, Tim Berners-Lee, and 22 other Nobel laureates. There is a common saying that goes around uh, when it comes to foreign members, they say having a Nobel Prize is not good enough reason to be elected to the Royal Society. Out of its 141 members, there are 51 Nobel laureates within that. So it is the premier um, academy in the world in terms of sciences. The institute that I helped set up, the Advanced Technology Institute, uh, again is very proud to be able to contribute to society in everything it does. Although we got our funding to set up a single unit under one roof in 2002, we've got about 160 researchers, so it's as big as a department really, 160 researchers with 22 faculty members from physics, electronics, chemistry, materials, and one biologist. Um, these all work under one roof and we contribute. Our history as a unit goes back 40 years we patented and delivered the first strain layer laser. So every laser that you see is based on a number of patents. One of those patents was done by Professor Alf Adams, FRS, and, and he uh, patented the idea of strain layer. When people were trying to make perfect crystals of gallium arsenide, he said, no, let's put some defects in there, and that will help the inversion process associated with creating uh, light emission. We were also uh, the first to help with the rapid thermal annealing. People who are doing material processing will know about RTA. The RTA work started with Professor Brian Seeley um, in Surrey. We also contributed to high power devices in Cymox wafers, his insulator on silicon wafers. Again, the work was done by Professor Peter Hammond.